My name is Shabnam Rezai. I'm with Big Bad Boo Studios based in New York and Vancouver. Big Bad Boo has produced two great shows. One is 16 Hudson that's in the preschool age category, as well as The Bravest Night, which is a Hulu original. Uh, and I would say that both of these shows have done a lot to be inclusive and be representative of the different types of characters that we wanted to show. In trying to achieve inclusivity for 16 Hudson as well as The Bravest Night, one of the things that's most important to me uh, was the behind the scenes composition of our crew and cast. Uh, so as an example, our studio is 50-50 uh, gender balanced. In um, one department, which is the storyboard department, we haven't achieved uh, the 50 percent balance, but in all other departments we have, and it's an active thing that we work towards, um, starting with the writer's room. So when we first started writing for 16 Hudson, given that the families have these different backgrounds, like Lily being from an Iranian heritage, Sam being Chinese, Luke being from Haiti with uh, dads from two different places, and Amala having an Indian mother and an Irish dad. We wanted writers that were uh, of these different backgrounds. And for the life of me, I couldn't find an Indian Canadian writer or a Chinese Canadian writer. So we started looking and we very actively decided if we couldn't find those writers, we would bring them in, bring in junior writers and train them. So we did exactly that. Um, for the Chinese writer, we actually went to the drama grown up world and uh, contacted a writer um, in that uh, field and and she was interested in coming over so uh, through the help of our wonderful story editors uh, John May and Suzanne Bolch we were able to train up and have a big writer summit which was not only gender balanced but also contained writers with, who had experiences that I wanted to put into the show so that was really important for us. And yes, it costs more money, it takes more time, and our story editors have to work harder, but that's part of the training that you're doing in the industry. And in a way, you're giving back to the industry so that these writers have gone on to do other shows. And in fact, two of our writers, um, Natalie Young and Jay, have gone on to start an organization called BIPOC Film and TV in Canada, which stands for the Black Indigenous People of Color, organization and they have over a hundred members at the moment and they are actively working with young writers, junior writers, doing workshops and trying to build a an army of writers that will hopefully create and write more stories that are coming from very different groups and are being authentic to um, their background and heritage. There you are. Are you ready for your lesson in becoming a knight? Always ready, Dad. Who am I battling? Oh, there's no battle. Why do you always think there's a battle? Isn't that what being a knight is all about? Being a not yet knight is about more than battling. Nia, today I am going to teach you how to rescue someone from the top of a tower. Prince Andrew has volunteered to be saved. Hi, Nia. Hi, Papa. Can we hurry this up? I have to be at royal court soon. I wanted to speak to the cast that we have, for example, in our show, The Bravest Knight, which not only has two dads, the prince and the knight who are married, but they've also adopted a young girl named Nia, who is African-American. We, not only for her character, but for all characters, we wanted the voice actors to be reflective of who these characters were. So in the case of Nia, we went with uh, Storm Reed. In case of the prince, we have Wilson Cruz. Waiting to jump out. And our uh, brave knight is T.R. Knight. I am just the one for you. With the younger brave knight, when we flash back, being um, Chance Hertzfield, uh, playing opposite uh, Bobby Moynihan from Saturday Night Live as Grunt, who is the purple troll who lost his bridge. <laughs> Uh, the Bravest Night has been a groundbreaking show in that it has uh, characters from the LGBTQ rainbow throughout the series. Uh, we have uh, RuPaul and Wanda Sykes, as well as Terry Polo. 
Um, so having their voice behind uh, this show has been very helpful. Um, and again, throughout the writing as well as the production, of the series, we like to make sure that behind the scenes, in every level, uh, we are able to um, bring in a multitude of voices to make sure that we're authentic and accurate. Broadcasters can get away from the drip effect by hopefully um, engaging with authentic voices. When looking for productions and new series, I would just like we do, look for uh, writers and creators and artists who are truly connecting with the content, who are telling their own story, and whose voice hasn't been heard yet. So one of the things we're very big on at Big Bad Boo is being inclusive and telling stories of those whose stories haven't been told, which is the reason a lot of our series have strong women characters, we have uh, the gamut of cultural uh, diversity and stories being told. Um, I called it uh, putting color on screen because I want my children to see themselves uh, on TV. So for example, in 16 Hudson, when we have a celebration of the Persian New Year, um, that's really special to them because we celebrate that at home. And when they see it on television, it's normalized. Other people are doing it. Therefore, I'm normal, I'm okay. That's the connection that kid, kids need to make. And in order for those stories to be told, broadcasters, investors, and those that are green lighting shows need to be aware that their creators, their, their writers, um, designers, uh, and anyone who's in the creative process should be able to connect to that content so that it feels authentic. So I think that's one way of doing it. In terms of what each person can do in their daily life, I think uh, if you are a person who is commissioning, who's green lighting, I would say definitely look for these things um, in your hiring practices, in your green lighting practices. And if you come to a place where you just can't find what you're looking for, then you have to create it. Um, that's how we feel we have done a lot of our behind the scenes. Um, like I said, it takes it may require some funding, but there is funding uh, for training staff. And if you're actively hiring more women, more people of color um, in various positions, and hopefully helping them to grow in the organization, no matter how small, especially if you're big, um, it will make a difference. It takes time, but I do believe that in the next five to 10 years, the results of all these individuals planting these seeds is going to give us a big garden that's filled with color.